Hi guys, today we're going to talk about how to create dark florals with watercolour. So here is a Ted Baker boot that I actually painted maybe last year. I, I couldn't find the actual uh, painting to show you, but that's just a bit of old footage. So I chose colour lilies and hydrangeas to paint today because I thought um, it's quite labour intensive anyway, sort of working on the the dark part of the dark florals and I thought it would be nice it's a it's a simple and elegant flower the lily and then the hydrangeas I always like to pair um sort of contrasting things together so the color lilies are sort of simple and elegant and the hydrangeas are quite busy and small one's larger and you know one's smaller and so I thought they'd pair together nicely for this so we're going to work on uh so this is a sketchbook we're going to do um, on the channel at some point so it's just one piece of Saunders Waterford paper uh, all sort of torn up and then um, we're going to bind that so you can get a cotton paper just out of one uh, sheet of oh, sorry a cotton sketchbook out of one sheet of paper but so I haven't bound it yet but we're going to use some of the pages in here so today we are using these um, so my favorite De Brinci De oh, well, I can't speak today the Da Vinci Double Zero paintbrush that I always uh, generally use. And I've never sort of used a different one other than that. So I've never really been sure of the quality. As far as I know that it paints beautifully, but is there something else out there that's a little bit better? Or, you know, especially like the handle's very light. So I, I like something that's a bit uh, firmer to hold. So anyway, I got this uh, Isabay one. It's double the price of the Da Vinci. Uh, so I got it off uh, Blick. And then I wasn't sure about whether or not, you know, it would be better or not. And I actually, you'll see today while we're painting, I just don't like it. So it looks really pretty and it's really nice to hold. But um, it doesn't feel as good on the paper like when, as the other paintbrush and it keeps uh, flicking water everywhere from the the sort of plastic part so I'm not sure what's going on there I think I left it in to show you but I, I edited some of them out but um, I did it about six or seven times just on this one painting so I might use this for tutorials on the channel but I'm not going to use this to paint uh, proper paintings and uh, I just wanted to let you know so that, you know, the I still recommend the Da Vinci one. It is such a good brush. And I think that's linked below. But uh, so what we're doing here is, so we're not actually into the tutorial yet. This is sort of a preliminary color study and also just a what not to do kind of thing. So um, I am, you can see here that I have done a little sort of, a sketch with my brush of the color lily and the hydrangeas and then I've gone in with the watercolor and because I didn't let the flowers dry it's all going to blend together so I'll show you this page um, so I'll show you this once it's dry uh, and you'll see so you know as far as not letting things dry and also maybe having too much water so things are moving around you can see like the paint uh, you know it is an effect that you can use if you want that but you know too much water can cause the um, too much of a flow and not letting one part of the painting dry before you start another can also cause um, too much of an overlap and the colors to flow into each other so You'll see uh, while we're painting that I do like to soften the edges into, so once the flowers are dried, I do like to bring the um, color like from the negative space up to the object and sort of soften it in there. So it does look like it's blending and overlapping a little bit, but not the way this is. Okay, so we're gonna work on the sketching part of the painting now. So I am trying to figure out a way that I can 
because the sketching is uh, it does take up quite a quite a lot of time I'm trying to figure out a way that I can get these sketches to you uh, I know that some of you just prefer to sort of play with the watercolors and not necessarily work on the sketching so I want to find a way that uh, you can have the sketches available maybe anyway I'll figure that out but uh, so that you can just trace those and play with the watercolor you don't have to worry about the sketching so the first one we're doing, it's kind of like a heart. So it's the upside down kind of version. We have the heart and then a half circle in the middle and then the stem in the middle. So then we have the uh, sort of upright version and then it's sort of like a candle, like if you think of a flickering candle, it's a little bit wider than that at the sides, but uh, that's sort of what we're drawing here. And then we have the kind of sideways version. So this is uh, sort of like you're drawing hills, I guess. So this one's a little bit more complicated, but uh, you can start with either of the other two and you should be able to get a really nice uh, feel for the flower. Okay, so now we're just working on the hydrangea shape. So you can see it's um, it's sort of like four diamonds that intersect. But they're a little bit softer and have rounded uh, corners or rounded points. Okay, so I've just pulled out the other palette because I realized that I really like to use the lunar violet and the hematite violet for the dark florals. So, um, and you can see there that the lunar violet, I used almost half... A half pan for just those palette paintings that I created the other day so to get the you know the depth in the dark floral areas you will need to use quite a lot of paint but we'll get into all of that uh, so firstly we're just going to start with putting the color on the actual flowers so there's several different ways that you can uh, kind of approach this you can do the negative space first, but I often like to do the positive space first, even if it's very pale. So you can see here that I'm wetting the entire surface of the flower and just dropping in some pale colors here and there, like more towards the center. Okay, so you can see that for this flower, I uh, filled the flower with water. So I brushed on water first, and then I've just dropped in some shell pink and some chinabresses. So the the chinabresses are like a Naples yellow reddish or a Jean Brunet number no. two. It's sort of the Wallace and Seymour version of that, but it's really pretty. So you can see here that the water just flicked out of the, um, the, the, the part of the... I'm not sure why it's not watertight because I, I've never had that happen before. 
And you can see again here, I'm approaching it the same way. I am laying the water down first and then I'm going into the center with some color. So I hope it's not too noisy. The neighbors are having their yard done. So just, <laughs> I apologize if you can hear that. So uh, what we are working on here is um, pulling the color in the direction that you want it to fall. So even though it's going to spread, you still want to try and, and uh, start it in the direction it needs to go. And then you can see here that while it's drying, I keep dropping in color uh, where I think it needs to deepen up. So you can kind of see the colors start to dissipate. You can see them sort of being absorbed into the paper and you know lighten a little bit and that's when you can start to drop in more color while it's still wet and it will still uh, give you a nice blend. So I am working on the leaf here and I'm, I'm using Daniel Smith Terravert uh, Compose Green, Holbein Compose Green I think is that right? No. That is Daniel Smith Fuchsite, and then I also use the um, green, the so this is the Colors of the Iron Range Green Umber, and uh, the Green Gold, Daniel Smith Green Gold. So at this point I know it's going to be a dark floral painting, so I'm trying to think about the end result here and think about not, uh, so this is the iridescent green as well. So. Oh, uh, is that right? Iridescent um, green gold or jade? Iridescent jade. So I am trying to think about here not uh, making the leaves too bright green. I want them to have a little pops of color but not be too um, bright. So, you know, I want them to sort of blend with the end result here. So I've chosen the umber for, for you know, the majority of that leaf now if i wasn't doing a dark floral i probably i wouldn't go for that that deeper color so and then i'm using the kaput mortuum with white so any type of you know um violet earth that you have you can use this similar thing either with white or just watered down and i'm just sort of loosely putting in the hydrangeas here Hopefully one thing you can see here is as well is that uh, while, when I'm uh, putting the initial wash or the initial layer on is that I, I keep adding in extra colors. So I don't just paint the whole hydrangea bush there with the one color we've mixed up. I'm, I'm continually adding in little extra pieces of color to the wash so that even if you're still using sort of the similar colors there's that little bit of change and variance there in the color so again i'm going back into the leaves before they're dry uh, while i can see that they're still quite you know they're you don't sort of you still want it to be quite nicely wet while you're dropping in these colors so that they flow out you can see they have still a very nice flow to them i'm thinking i might actually do a tutorial on sort of just using and controlling the water and watercolor because it's something i know there's a lot of tutorials ab about it on youtube and uh it's something that i'm constantly monitoring and i don't necessarily talk about a lot so I think I might uh, sort of give you some of the ways I'm doing that. Okay, so you can see here that I am getting, I want this front flower to have a little bit more color and a bit more depth into it. So I'm using a bit of the pyrrole orange and the organic vermilion, and I'm just dropping that in and then I will soften that into the painting once it's uh, spread out a little bit. Okay, so you can kind of see that I, I want this front flower to be more of the focal point and I'm happy to leave the other two flowers as a soft pale contrast to the, um, you know, dark background that we're going to put in. 
And again, I'm going to keep lifting uh, colors here while it's still wet and I can still work with the area and uh, just keep monitoring that until it's starting to dry. So if you haven't watched the painterly flowers tutorial, that's a really good one to show a lot of these techniques in more depth as well. Okay, so now I am starting to do the dark background area. So you can see here that I'm not going in with the color first. I'm going in with water and just wetting an area. So not the whole painting. I'm just wetting an area that I want to start with, but I'm trying to be careful uh, to do it where there's not going to be a break in the color there so if it starts to dry I don't want there to be sort of a crease uh, where it, where I left it to dry. So the first color I'm going in with is Hematite Violet and you can use like Moon Glow or Shadow Violet something like that as well for this uh, part and then I'm starting to drop in the Lunar Violet so this will uh, you'll see kind of through the video this will take several um, you know go back over the areas several different times and keep dropping in color the first time while it dries and then also I go back in with another whole wash of this as well so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here as well as I'm so I'm using some organic vermilion here, but I'm I'm looking at different areas. This is one of the things that I really liked. Um, when I was painting the Ted Baker boot, uh, the some of the areas, I think it, it's an oil painting that's on there, but I really wanted to see if I could replicate some of that with watercolor. So uh, making some of the areas of the background wash more painterly and look like paints flowing. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. I am putting on uh, different colors that I think complement the background and the of uh, and the flowers and kind of um, you know mix them together a little bit and then using that as part of the wash. So you can also see here that I'm leaving some negative space around the hydrangeas there to make it kind of look like the bush is coming out a little bit further. And they're almost highlights or just you know extra petals and then this is the first time that I'm going back into all these dark um, you know areas of the lunar violet and deepening those up so I probably do this six or seven or maybe even eight times throughout the process You can see here that I'm going to go back into another area here so it's a nice little area um, that's just all contained on its own so it's an easy one to do and again I've left some negative space there around uh, the where the hydrangea bush would be sort of giving you the suggestion that it's there As I put the water here, I want you to see how you the color from the right side started immediately flowing over. That means there's a good amount of water to still to work with on the page. So, you know, I'm constantly monitoring how, you know, how dry it is so I know I can still keep working with it. I want the background to look seamless in a way that I don't want it to dry patchy like I've painted it in patches even though I'm kind of adding in these extra areas uh, you know of, of different colors I still want them to all blend seamlessly into each other.
you can see that I have left the negative space around the hydrangeas. So I left this space underneath uh, this lily uh, blank for a reason. I kind of want to show you here how you can uh, blend the other colors so and soften them on top of each other. So I am just kind of allowing the watercolor here to soften into the lily. Almost a bit more like it's coming out of the background. And so I just keep monitoring it and lifting out color if, you know, I think there's too much there. So for a painting like this, you could work on it, you know, for a long period of time. So not just sort of a half an hour video. You could actually, I think the boot one I spent a week on. So it's something that you can continue to layer and layer. But I think I finish it pretty much after this. I actually do go back in and do a second wash off camera um, to deepen up the, once, once it's all dry, to deepen up the, um, you know, the dark part. But you can see here, I just, while it's still slightly damp, I've got my gold ink and dip pen and I just go around some of the, uh, areas so I'm not lining everything I'm just lining some areas and I'm also letting the uh, gold pen bleed a little bit into the paper and so you can see here like like with the that lily I'm really happy that some of the lunar violets um, bled into that and some of the shell pinks gone into the uh, leaf there so it's quite nice and then I've actually gotten the uh, neon pink pastel there's just little tiny bits because I broke it and it's just, I'm just pressing those into the um, into the background there and so you can see on these that I have gone back in and darkened it up again and I quite like the uh, sort of the contrast on these palettes of the the dark floral and then the lighter part of the of the palette so this is a technique that's kind of really uh, versatile. You can do it with all kinds of different flowers, all kinds of different color combinations. You can see here the color combination is a little bit different than the one we've worked on today. And like for next year, I'm thinking about different things we can do each month, like monthly mixes and possibly dark florals will be one of them. Transparent watercolors as well. So, uh, there's so much to explore about these different types of of paintings so and thank you to everyone who has supported the shop and used the jackson's affiliate link i really appreciate it i think that um hopefully everything from the shop will be going out tomorrow or the next day you can see this little heart that i saw in the palette as well um and then i am trying to work on the uh herbert louis heart paints instagram so instagram's always hard for me to figure out how to make it look pretty so i might take photos off and on while i'm trying to figure that out just to let you know that as well but um i hope this was useful and i will see you guys soon bye